Recovering the rich family history of most black Americans has been difficult, if not impossible, due to the brutal legacy of slavery. That's why ABC News has partnered with the 10 Million Names Project, where a team is working to trace the ancestry of the 10 million formerly enslaved Americans. Our friend and colleague, Michael Strahan, was able to discover how his own ancestors gained freedom after emancipation. Hello, family. All right. Good, good. It's hot. It's hot. I'm Loretha. Loretha. I'm Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. Michael, good to see you. Homeboy, yeah, Billy. Hey, Billy. How you doing? Good to meet you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Imagine meeting family for the first time in a town steeped in American history in your history. Most black Americans can't visit land owned and cultivated by their ancestors who were formerly enslaved people. Here I am meeting my long lost cousins, Loretta, Stephanie, Billy, and Philip. <laughs> oh, yeah. In the East Texas community of Shankleville. Many times, the family trees of descendants from enslaved people only go back a few generations before going blank. But mine doesn't. It actually connects me to folks that were born into slavery, set free at the end of the Civil War, and went on to build their own self-sufficient black community. There's an incredible story within Michael Strahan's family history that um, was passed down largely through oral tradition. And it was the power of you know, genealogy and family history that made it possible for Michael Strahan to connect up with that community all these years later. Confirmed by historians, Shankleville is a prime example of one of America's more than 500 settlements, also known as Freedom Colonies. Freedom Colony is a term that's often used to describe a black community, uh, a community of black land ownership that took root after emancipation. Founded by formerly enslaved men, women, and children, these communities became um, safe havens for many, right, from the broader experience of the Jim Crow era. A few years ago, researchers looked into my family tree, and those behind the groundbreaking 10 Million Names project said it confirmed I was part of this community and its rich legacy. And it all began with Jim and Winnie Shankle. Can you tell me the story of Jim and Winnie Shankle? Jim and Winnie Shankle were enslaved in Mississippi, and Winnie was sold to a Texan and so Jim really missed her and, you know, wanted to know where she was. So he kind of asked around and found out about where she was. And so he ran away. Now a runaway slave, Jim was risking his life, dodging police, slave patrols, and professional slave catchers to find Winnie. He somehow managed to make it 400 miles on foot across the Mississippi River and found his beloved Winnie. There was a spring a few yards from here, and she was out, you know, gathering water, washing clothes, and she heard a call. She was like, that sounds like Jim's call. And sure enough, it was Jim. Jim arranged to be purchased by Winnie's owner so that he could stay with her. They eventually had six children of their own. So it's, it's a love story. Yes, definitely. Over 400 miles exactly. to find exactly. the woman that he loved. Right, exactly. They were freed from slavery in 1865 as the Civil War winded down. With money Jim saved up from several post-emancipation jobs, along with the help of a family friend, the couple bought up more than 4,000 acres and built their own community. This neighborhood had a store, schools for kids, a college, a cotton gin, grist mills, farms, cemeteries, undertakers, and churches. Things unheard of or unavailable to most black Americans at that time. Historically, recovering the names, contributions, and stories of enslaved black Americans has been extremely limited. I'm among the few who were lucky enough to have access to my family's history. Mike, this is our church, uh, CME Methodist Church and community. It was the first church in this community. We have three at the time. We had a lot of renovations done since the original mm -hmm. church building. I see what you mean by those big windows yes. in the little church, but they had a lot of sunlight. 
Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. As they go say, God let the Lord in. Across the way at the cemetery, we pay tribute to the town's two brave founders. So Jim and Winnie, are they buried here? Sure. Yes, they are. They're over this direction. See a lot of familiar names, Shanko, Spike, yes. Yes. See Strahan, Peacock. If they have roots in this community, uh, they will be buried back here in Shankleville. I'm looking at this headstone, the original headstone. She says, there's father, mother, and at the bottom, remembered for what they have done. Yes, yes. Sir. Powerful, yes, very powerful. Is. But it's amazing to think of two people right here where we stand, yes, so responsible for us standing here. Absolutely. As we walk across this sacred ground, I notice a familiar name on a headstone and find myself a bit overwhelmed. My grandfather, Abe, we used to go by A-B-E, yes. he, he's buried here. I never had a chance to meet him. Oh, wow. And I was born 14 years later. Oh, goodness. So this is a little shocking, you know, to see this. He obviously was a great man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all those uh, frontiers, they really worked hard. They had to. It wasn't need the existence. Right. Well, this is kind of mind-blowing to come back here and see this, to see my grandfather, who I never had a chance to meet. And, um, wow, history. Yeah. Yeah. Well, history. The next stop on our tour, the Odom Homestead, a house built in 1922 by A.T. Odom, another Shankle descendant. This home was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2012. We're standing outside the Odom house. Right. And I'm looking at <laughs> this gate. This gate. But with no, no fence, fence. With no fence, right. And that's because my grandmother would judge people's character about how they came in the gate and whether they closed it. Mm. As we were restoring the house, we were like, OK, the fence is gone and everything, but we're going to keep the gate. Mm -hmm. We're in the vestibule of the house. And I'm looking at his telephone here. So this was the original telephone that was here. A.T. Odom is the person who built this house. He built uh -huh. it in 1922. Our restoration efforts are going back to 1945. It's an unbelievable story, because what they've done here, 1880s or 1800s at some point, over 4,000 acres, to build a community with, with everything in it, why is this not more nationally known? You know, I like to say there are two ways that people tend to look at African-American history. One is, oh, they don't have a history. And the other one is, I don't want to talk about that. So luckily for me, my mother was very, very instrumental in talking about it. The reason that we have all the, the genealogy of so many people is because she would come to homecomings, pull people off to the side, you know, tell me who was in your family, write it all down. Wow. And um, the heart of every home, kitchen. So here's the kitchen. When you look at this picture, and you can see that we basically have the same setup here that's in that picture. Well, I tell you what, it um, smells good. I know, because I'm cooking right. purple whole peas. Because you're cooking. Exactly. Oh, lucky for me, a big pot of purple whole peas made from peas originating in Africa and grown here for generations were cooked to perfection by Cousin Loretta. Mm -mm -mm. You ain't made no cornbread with it. But I'll leave you alone. I'll take these peas and be happy. Mm, boy. It's not just about preserving the past, but also building the future. Ever since 1941, the family gathers here yearly to celebrate homecoming, where descendants who left town years ago reunite to maintain family ties. With singing all Saturday night, then church services all day Sunday. We pray for your children and grandchildren. Yes. And the next generation has big plans, including a bona fide vineyard. Why do you want to build a vineyard here? I decided on Shankleville because of the history. Mm. I wanted to plant on the grounds that my ancestors acquired so, so long ago, thinking about all the jobs that I could create. And mm -hmm. I'm the new generation. There's a blurb on the back of my wine bottle that's dedicated to Shankleville. Oh, let's see it. Planting red grapes and producing wines that signify the blood, sweat, and tears that our ancestors went through to acquire land and build in Shankleville. This isn't just someone who says, I love wine, let me just make some wine. This is about 
family, this is about your past, it's about your future, it's about preserving the community, bringing more people to the community to learn the great story about Shankerville. You said it better than me. Michael's journey underscores why the 10 million names project is so important. It's giving all Americans more of our history back. For more, you can visit goodmorningamerica.com or you can see more of Michael's journey later tonight on Nightline. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.